So I'm very excited today to have Dr. Keith McCormick to discuss one of the minerals that he does discuss in his book, amongst many um, other minerals and other nutrients. And the mineral we're going to discuss is strontium. So I know that so many clients, when they receive their bone mineral density scores, they're very alarmed. And then they're so fearful of fracturing. And, and then not just the fear of fracturing, but then the fear of taking a powerful pharmaceutical that leads to the fear of unknown, not knowing, you know, what, um, you know, what they should do. And so, so many will go to look at alternatives and many supplement companies play on this fear of fracturing. They promote products that they guarantee will increase your bone mineral density within six months or get your money back. Um, but as you know, supplement companies are not regulated and therefore they don't have to undergo third-party testing for accuracy and purity of their product. So that's why I've asked you to talk about strontium because you've written more about it than anybody else in a book on osteoporosis. So I really thank you for that. And I'm going to ask you to start by just briefly describing what strontium is. Strontium is not a, uh, a mineral that we necessarily need for bones. I mean, there's nothing documented to say, yes, we need strontium. We do need calcium. We do need uh, magnesium and other trace minerals, but we don't really need strontium, or at least there's nothing that we know of that it there's no job that it truly does for bone. Um, so it's not an essential mineral. There's very little of it. And what is in our body, I think it's only like an ounce or so, an ounce or two, is all in your bones. And um, it, the, the interesting thing about strontium, it's very similar to calcium. And a lot of, uh, a lot of the same absorption uh, mm -hmm. mechanisms are or strontium and calcium have the same thing. But the major difference is that strontium, the atomic weight is twice that. It's 87 versus 42, I think, uh, for, for calcium. So it's tw this atomic weight is twice that of calcium. And what does that mean is mm -hmm. it, for us, for, for people having osteoporosis and bone densities, is when you take strontium, it laces into the bone and it creates a bigger blockade to the x-rays. So it's called attenuation. So, so when you're on a bone density uh, DEXA machine table, there's x-rays going through from the top, they go through your body and then they're captured, the x-rays are captured underneath you. And uh, because the strontium is heavier weight, it blocks more, it attenuates more of those x-rays. So it makes your bones look uh, denser than they truly are. Just, But it's just because that strontium is twice the, as heavy as the calcium. So hence, it's very easy to have a money-back guarantee because uh, all, it's always going to work. Yes, if you all my patients who are on strontium do gain density. I, I don't, I mean, it's rare that I see a person not but that doesn't mean that they have decreased fracture risk. That's right, because it doesn't mean it, they've increased bone quality. So bone strength is a combination of bone quality and bone density. And when you assess a person for bone density on a DEXA machine, you're only looking at one thing, and that's bone, bone density. So. And I know here in Canada, we actually, at the Health Canada guidelines, if you go up and look at strontium, they actually ask people to test their well water for strontium. Mm -hmm. And they ask people to, if they have strontium to, you know, either filter their water because of the association with weaker bones, and especially and concerning for growing bodies. Children. Yeah. yeah. Especially children, because the strontium actually too much strontium actually makes bones of children fragile. So So if you go, okay, well, if it's not healthy for children, <laughs> questionable it? about it. Yeah. Yeah. For, for adults. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Do you believe or do you think that strontium in its other forms that appear in the supplements can can be taken safely? And if so, in what dosage? 
I don't know about the safety. I, at, at this point, the, the uh, research, the little bit that there is, um, does seem to say it's safe to take. Um, my, you know, safety in one way might not be safety in another way. And my concern with the safety of it is the safety of a person's bones. And, um, you know, I, I, there probably isn't the same uh, safety issues, uh, you know, as far as, you know, heart issues and things as the strontium renolate, but there may be because, you know, strong, uh, cal nerves conduct electricity. And one of the ways they do it is through, through calcium. Well, if now you replace that with strontium, is that the same conduct uh, activity as, as calcium ions? I don't know. So, but that is a, a concern. And, but for me, the, the, the more concern is for a person's bone health. And the, when a person stops strontium, they lose the bone density that they gain fairly rapidly. And so if you, um, I talk about this in my book, Great Bones, about prolia, mm -hmm. and how if you stop prolia, one of the medications, you lose bone very bone density very rapidly. And that is what causes an increased risk for fracture, that rapidness of bone loss. Well, the same thing happens with strontium, not to the same extent, but a person will lose their bone density that they gained pretty quickly after they stop strontium. So is, and this mm. is never talked about in the literature, but is there then an increased risk for fracture after a person stops. So we don't know, so we don't even know if there's a, a reduction in fracture risk by taking strontium, really. We know that they, it increases density, but is there then a chance that it might increase fracture risk? You might have an increased fracture risk when you discontinue it. Valid point. And the other point, and it only because I, I hear it from clients, is they're like, well, I'll just take it for two years because it's really expensive to take and you know if it helps then great but they're never told that yeah, stop. <laughs> yeah. that you know if you stop you're kind of screwed right um certainly could be and um well you are because if your entire goal is to just see a change in your dexa if you stop you're going to see it go down and you could be so devastated that's right you know? and then you might do this yo-yo thing and we don't know anything about what impact that is. And, and the other thing that I think people don't understand is uh, the crystal of bone, bone crystals have different sizes. And as you lose bone, the larger crystals stay around, the smaller crystals decrease earlier on. Hmm. So is the placement, and you have to remember that, that a lot of the things. Yeah, that's right. And a lot of the studies that have been done on people with osteoporosis with strontium are done with people with not that bad of bone density. But now you get somebody with a negative four who has you know, severe bone, bone loss, they have these larger crystals and does the strontium affect that larger crystal differently? I think and, it probably does. And so I'm gonna attempt to, to explain it visually. And you can tell me if I'm right or wrong because I often will explain you know, the, the trabeculae, the internal scaffolding of the bone is going, okay, if you have healthy bone, you have interconnectivity everywhere. But then as you get osteoporosis, you start to get, you know, gaps, right? And so if, we don't know, from what you're explaining to me, if you all of a sudden, you know, have a strontium crystal replace a calcium crystal, but say this is strontium, but you stop taking it and it, then you now get bigger gaps and therefore putting yourself at a higher risk of fractures. Um, is that kind of what you're alluding to? Well, the, the trabecula are not necessarily, they're not crystals, but the trabecula are made up of all these bone crystals. Yeah, so, so I've been in, yes. yeah. Like a lot of, microscopically. Yes, microscopically. Not, not enough fingers. <laughs> <laughs> when the trabeculae yeah. become what you're saying disconnected, yeah. um, 
it is a breaking apart of all those crystals and they, they come apart and now the trabecular aren't connected. So a, if you go down even further to that crystal area, if that crystal form is too large, mm. does that strontium molecule, uh, that strontium atom fit in there the same way as a calcium? And because as remember, these are not normal bones anymore. These are osteoporotic bones with, with different crystal forms in it than is the, than the typical, quote, healthy normal person. And so, yeah, you start having disconnected, disconnected trabecula with these abnormal uh, uh, crystals, and we might have a problem. And so you're getting higher densities, but you don't know really where you stand right. in terms of quality. So you might take on going, oh, I'm going to go downhill skiing because my bone density is so much stronger this year and, and not know. Well, I think we covered strontium well, and I want to thank you for, you know, just diving into it with me. It's, it's a topic that um, I hear about, I get asked about a lot, I'm sure you do as well, and we might not be totally accurate in what we shared, but probably more accurate than what people are reading otherwise on the web. It's a complex subject, and as you said, there's not a lot of good information out there about it, and the reason why is because all the studies were done on strontium renolate, or 99% or of the studies were done on strontium renolate. And I don't think that you can actually take, and people try to do this, but people try to take all the studies of strontium renolate and then just juxtaposition it onto strontium citrate, carbonate, gluconate, you know, and onto the strontium salts. And I don't think that is really completely possible. Or there's the a few studies that were done using the manufacturer's product, and those are definitely biased studies. I mean, whether you like it or not, yeah. there's not been any independent studies there. So, so for more information and great just knowledge, I really encourage people to read your book, uh, Great Bones, so that they can have great bones safely. Thank, Thank you very much, Keith. Margaret.